Welcome back to Alchemy Week and my Renaissance Laboratory. Today, I'm going to talk about the classical element fire. These days, we know that fire consists of many elements. It's flames made mostly of carbon dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen, and particles of good old H2O, which is pretty similar to what is in normal air. But in the days before we knew these things, fire was an element in and of itself. Fire was the most important element of all, since it was the primary catalyst of transmutation or change. And this makes sense because even now, heating is a cause of change for any given substance and used a ton in chemistry. Think Bunsen burner. But back then, fire wasn't simply combustion and flames. Alchemists had four grades of fire, elementary, secret, central, and celestial. Elementary fire was the crudest, or most impure fire. It told the dirtiest jokes of the bunch. <laughs> Just kidding. It was the material fire we know today, flames and such. And then on the other end of the spectrum, celestial fire represented the power of God's will, a white fire that was so pure it didn't actually burn like a fire, it more existed in the ethereal realm of the divine. Now, central fire was somewhere in between the material and ethereal and was thought to hide at the center of elementary or material fire where it could be imbued with the divine celestial fire, hence the name central fire. Secret fire though, that's my favorite. No one is quite sure what it is, hence its name secret fire, but there are theories that it is the fire that's within you, the fire within the alchemist, your life force, the fire that you bring. There was a man named Antoine Joseph Pernody who wrote a book on alchemy in 1898 called A Treatise on the Great Art, and in it, he wrote this quote about secret fire. He said, it is the fire which Prometheus stole from the heaven. So sure, this statement might not be based in any verifiable truths, and we don't really know what secret fire is, and it has also been kicked out of the scientific verbiage, but one thing I really appreciate about the science that would happen pre-scientific method is that there is this way of acknowledging things not yet understood by describing them using what they did know, their sense of poetry, their sense of self, their spirituality, and their art. All right, guys. Thank you for watching another Element a Day in May. Alchemy Week continues tomorrow with water. Element a Day in May.